why I never want to bulk or cut again. It's been a hard couple of weeks because my body has been hungry for, for nourishment. And when you're cutting, you're not giving it that. And yeah, I got pretty ripped, but was it worth it? Hi, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, my name is Matty, and I'm a male model physiotherapist and fitness enthusiast. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I never want to cut a bulk again. Okay, so the first reason stems back to when I first started lifting. I did not optimize my newbie gains. When I was 20, and this was the time I started lifting, I had the obsession with being lean all the time. Within the first year of lifting, you can put on up to 10 kilograms or 20 pounds of lean muscle mass. This is known as the newbie gains but I made the mistake of just constantly cutting bulk and cutting bulking. Every three, four months when I go through a bit of a lean bulk and I see my abs start disappear, I would then be like, okay, it's time to cut. And then I'll do a month of cutting, which really does hinder your progress. The first three years of lifting should be maximizing gains by lean bulking over a long period of time, because it's the first two, three years that you can gain the most muscle. Of course, you want to start off bulking by being lean. And if you guys are interested in how to get to that point, how to diet down, I've made plenty of videos on my channel and I'll leave a link in the description below. And after that point, you want to start bulking and do a nice lean bulk of a 500 calorie caloric surplus over a long period of time. And yes, you're going to put on fat. But yes, you're going to lose your abs. But this is the time when you can get really strong. You can put on a lot of muscle mass. The second reason is that dieting kind of sucks. If I was to total up the number of weeks that I've spent in a caloric deficit over these last couple of years, it's probably a year of being a caloric deficit, which is a lot of time. A lot of time when I could have been making gains. A lot of time when I could have been going to birthday parties and dinners and, and eating what I wanted to and enjoying food and enjoying life a little bit more. Even with intermittent fasting and if it fits your macros or flexible dieting, these things do help make things more sustainable. But despite all of this, it's not really a way to live. I am a fat kid at heart and if I could, I would just eat and eat and eat because I really enjoy food, eating all the time. And I think about food most of the time. And when you're in a caloric deficit, your body just cries out for sustenance, right? Because it's it's starving, right? In the prehistoric times, our ancestors would just gorge themselves and eat as much as they could in one sitting and probably put on quite a bit of body fat, but that was okay because they didn't know when the next meal was coming. They didn't have to be lean. But in today's society, we have such good accessibility to food whenever we need it that we don't really need to be storing as much body fat. I remember for my first kickboxing fight when I cut down from about 77, 76 kilos to about 71 kilos. There were days when I overate by a few hundred calories and I remember this one particular occasion when I walked three hours to burn off those calories that I ate. And that was just a bit crazy. It was almost borderline an eating disorder. So that's a bit of an issue. Maybe that's a video I'll make in the future. But fortunately I did make the weight for the fight. I cut those calories cut down body fat and I won the fight as well. But I'll be honest, at six foot two and 71 kilograms, that is not a healthy weight. I was significantly underweight. My relationship with food at that time was not so great. Reason number three is that bulking also kind of sucks. As we've established, I do enjoy eating food and I do think about food quite a lot. But bulking requires you to eat food and a lot of it, but consistently. Sometimes even when you don't feel hungry, you're like, I need these extra 500 calories to, to be in a caloric surplus to make the gains. This is exactly where the problem was. When you need to hit a certain calorie goal, despite how you're feeling, you need to get those calories in. So when I was at uni, my maintenance was around 3000 calories and that's excluding any exercise. I also put myself on a 500 calorie caloric surplus, so 3500, and then in addition to that, doing the exercise that I did, a pretty intense powerlifting program, plus the steps I would do around uni, led to me needing to eat around 4,000 to 4,500 calories a day in order to be in the required surplus. That is a lot of calories, that is a lot of food, and it was quite expensive for feeding myself during the weekly food shop. I'd be spending about 100 pounds plus on food per week, and that's just groceries, that's not including when I'd go out and eat with friends. I also knew that after a few months of bulking, I would put on quite a bit of body fat, and I'd probably need to do a cut as well. And it's just this endless cycle of bulking, cutting, bulking, cutting on repeat. But things have changed now. I was going to continue with this bulking, cutting, bulking, cutting, doing what 
kind of bodybuilders do, even though I'm not really a bodybuilder. And this is all up until January 2024 of this year, when I got scouted by a modeling agency. And they actually told me that I needed to lose a little bit of weight to tone up a bit, even though I was relatively lean, probably between 12 to 15% body fat already. I was probably close to 15 to be fair. So I did six weeks of dieting before I got signed and I got pretty ripped, pretty shredded. But here's the thing, I still wanna get stronger in the gym. I want to do something known as main gaining. Recently, I watched this video of this other Asian fitness influencer. I can't remember his name, but he's got quite a big following. Today, I'm gonna be talking about how I look the way I do at only 135 pounds, why I have never bulked and probably won't in the future. And he was five foot six at 131 pounds, and his proportions are perfect. He looks absolutely jacked. He's got a great physique. And I think he's benching 100 kilograms for reps, so he's quite strong as well. And he's talked about how he's never cut or bulked in his life, basically. He's always been relatively lean, but he's been putting on muscle and strength slowly over a long period of time with something known as main gaining, where he's essentially maintaining his body weight and progressively overloading the weights that he lifts in the gym, maybe eating in a slight caloric surplus on the days when he feels like he needs it, so when he's training harder. And as a result of this, he's not really needed a cut either. He's just been lean the entire time and he looks great. Is this optimal for strength and putting on muscle mass? Probably not, but there's been more of a shift away from this getting as big as possible recently, and more of a shift on how do I look aesthetic, and part of being aesthetic is being lean. So, 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 what I plan to do for the future is to main gain. I don't see myself cutting or bulking for a while, just because it was a lot of effort cutting and a lot of effort bulking, and that time can better be spent in more of a maintenance period. But on training days when I go hard, when I'm training, you know, upper body or lower body, and I do need extra calories, I am gonna eat in a very slight surplus of about 100 calories. And then on days when I'm not training, I'll just be in maintenance. The main focus has to be on getting stronger because that is gonna be the thing that drives muscular hypertrophy and it's all gonna be functional muscle that I build. And I'm still gonna use intermittent fasting to control my insatiable appetite, but also flexible dieting so that I can go out and still live a decent life so I can go out with friends and enjoy restaurants and meals. It, it can't be chicken, brown rice and broccoli all the time. I will let you know how this goes. So subscribe to stay updated and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found.